Shalom, you're watching Arutz Sheva TV. I'm Yoni Kempinski, and this is our Daily Edition. Shalom, we're broadcasting our Tish Abav, the fast of the 9th of Av uh, edition here at the center of Tel Aviv at Rabin Square as uh, many parts of society, many parts of the Israeli public are here talking, gathering, talking about unity, talking about the diversity of the nation, especially during these days, especially on this day of Tisha B'Av. We'll hear some voices from the events here in Tel Aviv soon. First of all, let's talk about the ceasefire. According to reports, Israel and the Palestinians have agreed on a new 72-hour Gaza ceasefire that would start at 8 o'clock Israeli time morning, that is. This report came from a senior official in Egypt. A Palestinian delegation, including Hamas representatives, has been holding talks in Cairo with Egyptian mediators for a durable truce in Gaza, but Israel has not yet sent any negotiators to the Egyptian capital. It's important to note that seven truces have come and gone in the course of Operation Protective Edge. All of them were broken by Hamas. This, of course, is a bit different because we're talking about a situation that the troops are already redeploying. Some of them are leaving the Gaza Strip, and it seems that this time it might be different. Despite all these reports, the Protective Edge counterterrorism operation is not over. That is according to the Prime Minister and the Defense Minister Moshe Elon. Defense Minister Moshe Elon said on Monday that the operation is not over and would not be over until there was a complete ceasefire from Hamas and that meant a complete cessation of rocket attacks on Israel, one that would remain intact. On a visit to Ashkelon, Yalon said that the IDF needed a little more time to finish up its operations to destroy Hamas terror tunnels. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also said Monday that the operation is continuing. What is about to conclude is the IDF action to deal with the tunnels, but this operation will end only when quiet and security are restored to the citizens of Israel for a lengthy period. And here in Tel Aviv, there was a terror alert today. Police set up roadblocks and caused major backups in the principal roads into and out of the city. Police had set up the roadblocks around Tel Aviv over concerns that a terrorist was trying to enter the city. A report said that the police had received a phone call saying that a terror attack may be imminent. Police said that the caller claimed that he was a resident of Hebron who had snuck into Israel in order to carry out a terror attack. However, he said he has changed his mind, although there might be others involved in the plot. Sources said that police get calls like this all the time and usually reach the conclusions that they are false, but after two terror attacks in Jerusalem, the sources said police were not taking any chances. And regarding Jerusalem, here's a look at what happened there today. Two terror attacks in the afternoon. A tractor slammed into a bus in Jerusalem at around 1.40 p.m. Monday in a terrorist attack killing one person and injuring six others. There were no passengers on the bus at the time, but the driver was among the casualties suffering late injuries after it overturned from the impact. Four of the injured have been taken to the Adasa Hospital Mount Scopus for treatment and one was taken to Shari Tzedek Medical Center. A 25-year-old man, a Haredi Kola student, has been killed after Magen David Adon medics declared him dead at the scene. A policeman shot the tractor driver and killed him, stopping the attack and likely preventing further casualties. Uh, in the center of Jerusalem, the uh, terrorist was shot dead just over an hour and a half ago by police units that arrived at the scene. The terrorist was driving a tractor and he managed to flip over a bus. Luckily inside the bus there are only two people, the driver and uh, one other passenger. What we can confirm is that apart from the terrorist who was shot dead at the scene, one Israeli civilian was killed, three others have been taken to hospital for treatment and we're considering this as a terrorist attack. The investigation continuing into the background and heightened security in Jerusalem, the center of Jerusalem, throughout the day after the terrorist attack. The event is behind us now. The police have launched an investigation. Unfortunately, we have injuries, but given the circumstances, it could have been much more worse. And we must thank the Jerusalem police for acting. I ask all residents to maintain vigilance because such a thing can happen anywhere in the country. However, no one should take their law into their own hands. As the emergency crews were completing their work at the uh, scene of the incident with the tractor and the bus, they were all rushed to a scene nearby where a soldier was shot in the stomach. Eyewitnesses said that he was shot by a man who then got on a motorcycle or scooter and then drove off toward the Arab neighborhood of Wadi Jos. There may have been another man 
on the scooter as well. While the background for the attack is not known, initial estimates are that it is yet another terror attack. <laughs> The shooter was dressed in black. He fired several shots at the soldier from close range. The man then ran toward a Vespa-type scooter and drove off. A security guard fired at the scooter, but apparently missed it. There is a very high likelihood that this is a terror attack. As we mentioned, today is Tisha B'Av, the fast of the 9th of Av. On Tisha B'Av, like every year, the Kotel this night was packed with people who came to pray, to remember to understand the idea, the essence of this day, the idea of the temple, the idea of what we have today, the Western Wall. We're here in Tel Aviv at a special event, a gathering of people of all different parts of the Israeli society. We uh, spoke to Rabbi Malkior, who is one of the organizers of this event since it began 15 years ago. You're listening to this dialogue, you're taking part in some of these dialogues. Does it emphasize the diversity or does it give hope for unity? Well, we, the hope of unity is the diversity. That's, we have different opinions of many things, and we have people here who speak from, uh, from different opinions. But that's the whole uh, beauty of the Jewish people, that, that you can include different opinions and, and be uh, a part of, of the debate. That's part of our strength, part of our democracy. Uh, we hope that one day also our enemies will have leave room for different opinions and for true democracy and then we can also have peace with our enemies. Another event that's taking place here in Robin Square is an event, a two-day event of talking unity between two uh, youth movements that are kind of on two sides of the society, the Bnei Akiva youth movement and the Noel HaOved Valomed. The annual march of the Nationalist Land of Israel organization, Women in Green, took place in Jerusalem this night. Chezki Ezra, our correspondent, was there. From here we call upon our leaders, take from the strength of the people and use it to also be strong. The people of Israel are strong, and now it is up to you, our political leaders, to be strong and to use the strength and the achdut and the love of the Jewish people in order to do what you should, be, should have done a long time ago, to apply Israeli sovereignty over Judea, Samaria, the Jordan Valley, and not only to apply it, but to actually uh, uh, implement it all over. So what is Tisha B'Av all about, especially these days? Here in Tel Aviv, we also met the chief rabbi of Tel Aviv, the former chief rabbi of Israel, Rabbi Israel Meir Lau. Is there a special feeling this year, and you know we're in the midst of uh, what's going on, the unity, the war, the crisis? I believe that in this year Tisha B'Av is fixing and correcting the crime, the sin we have made in the desert, which have created Tisha B'Av. We didn't want to come to Eretz Israel that time because of the spies who came and told that it is impossible to conquer the land, to control the country, and to win the battle against the 31 kings of Canaan. Then the Ribbono Shenolam punished us that this night we cried in vain, we will be crying for generations. These victims, the 64 victims of the last two day, weeks, who fell on the altar of Eretz Israel, the holy boys who sacrificed their lives and gave their lives in sake for the state of Israel, this is to fix that crime that we didn't want to obey, we didn't want to enter to the land. Okay, that's all for today's Daily Edition. We'll be back on Wednesday with another Daily Edition. That'll be after Tisha B'Av. Until then, from all of us here at Israel National News, Arut Sheva, Shalom.
n'attrape pas le fond.